Thank you, Shank. Very nice to meet you. Have a seat, please. Okay, well, thank you very much for coming in today. Did you have difficulty finding us? No, not at all. Oh, good. The directions were very well spelled out. Okay. That's good. Let's see. Well, uh, you said you were interested in the position. I have a bunch of positions here. Sorry. Uh, you said you're in the position, interest in the position of Sun Systems Administration. That's correct. Okay. Um, what do you know about our company, about Telco? I've done some extensive research on your company. And one of the things I found very interesting that was between 1990 and 1992, you increased your R&D budget by 40% and hired on 50% new engineers over the last four years. So what I was trying to do was find an entry-level position inside your job company. And what this would allow me to do with over the next couple of years as I matured inside the company as an assistant administrator on Sun Unix that you might find that my engineering background might be valuable to produce inside your technical staff of engineers and your R&D. And I was really quite interested in the, some of the fiber optics pioneering techniques that you people have used over the last 10 to 12 years since 1972 when your company was actually started, like the MX3, which was a multiplexer, which was a radically... Okay, well, thank you for coming to to the company, Peter, um, you're interested in the position I see for the Sun uh, Systems Administrator? Correct. Assistant. And uh, can you give me ideas of what you know about Telco? Or? I've done some extensive research on your company beginning from when you started in 1972. Mm -hmm. um, okay, that's good. And. Uh, you know, can you give me some other ideas of what you know? Well, some of the research that I uncovered in your company showed me that you have, your company in your R&D section, in your fiber optics, has pioneered some radically new advances in technology, mm -hmm. which I found very interesting. Really? Yeah. Well, like what, for instance? Well, one product that you pioneered back in 1989 was an MX3. It was a multiplexer for fiber optics communication. Right, exactly. Mm -hmm. right. Right. Good, you do know. Okay. Um, let's see. Now, you know we have two areas. We have the fiber optics division and the network access division. Do you know which area you're interested in working in? I'm interested in starting a career in networking, which you currently have a position available for. But later on in my career with your company, I'd like to move into your R&D to utilize my engineering test slash technology skills. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See now, by your background, I see that you've had some uh, Sun experience, so Sun Unix. Now, was that on the job or in school? Actually, I worked for Aries Publishing for three years as a network technician. Mm -hmm. And when I started there, I started in the mailroom as a mailroom clerk. But after being recognized as having valuable computer skills, I was quickly um, moved up the ladder to the position of mm -hmm. network technician where I actually did work on a Sun Unix system which was a file server mm -hmm. for a Macintosh system of between 50 to 60 uh, machines which utilized. I worked on that probably between two and three hours a day maintaining, mm -hmm. maintaining the entire environment okay. of the machines. Good, good. Here, um, let's see. Actually, I do. Yes, I have quite a few. I prepared. Is this position that you're offering a new, cr newly created position, or was it someone else that had it that has already advanced in your company? Well, this is a position that is not newly created. It's a position that we have uh, put together, and the person did get promoted. Now, would that be the person that I'm working for? Because I noticed that the job title specified. Sun Unix system administrator assistant. Mm -hmm. Would that be the person that I'd be working for that currently have my job position? Yes, that's correct. So I, also, um, along the lines of traveling, uh, would I be said, traveling extensively for your company or would everything be pretty much in house that would adhere to my job position? Well, I think for the first year or two, you might be in-house, but you know, we other have, have uh, we have other offices in Atlanta and Dallas. That is, again, our corporate-wide service support area in Pittsburgh, Kansas City. Um, we may even be doing some work internationally. 
Would that be a problem? No, it wouldn't. Mm -hmm. I'm actually like to travel a little bit during the year. Also, a benefits package is very important to me. I was wondering if you had a comprehensive benefit package inside your company okay. for full-time employees. Good. Um, sure. What I can do is I can show you a benefits package after we're done. Great. Okay. All right. Um, why did you particularly choose our company? Well, again, it goes back to when I was doing research inside your company. I noticed that it was a very family-oriented environment along the lines. I read a couple of your packages that the president has actually put out about um, summer jobs, or excuse me, summer festivals that go on throughout the year. Oh, and right. I found out that, you know, I'm a very family-oriented person, how mm -hmm. it utilizes inside. And it made me feel very comfortable at working with these people. It makes you feel like you're in a family environment. Oh, we have a very strong kind of a family feeling. Right. Here, you know, because um, I think that's really important that we want to make our employees feel like part of a family. And we feel that production and so forth, and the more opportunities we allow them, the more that they're going to produce for us. So, good. You know, what are your career goals, let's say in the next five to ten years? Well, speaking of that, that actually goes back to a little bit of research that I did in your company too. <clears throat> uh, financially, I'd like to, when I begin working for your company, so to speak, I'd like to advance through the ranks as my mature. Five years down the road, I'd really like to be inside your R&D development unit, inside, um, you know, working as one of the engineers on the team, pioneering some radically new advanced applications, so to speak, software or hardware-oriented development. And I'd eventually like to lead a team of engineers for your company mm -hmm. inside that. Good. Um, let's see. What other positions have you had that qualify you for this position? Well, again, the biggest one that I did have was working as a network technician for Air Age Publishing, which I was solely alone most of the day. My boss was in-house and out-of-house most of the day. But it utilized me in a way that when problems did occur, I had to use less logical methodology to solve these problems as soon as they occurred. Otherwise, the entire network could go down with, um, with uh, effects as far as financial loss for the company and so on down the line. Mm -hmm. okay. so. What do you feel you've contributed to your past employers? I see that you've worked for Apple Computer Correct. and also for Wentworth in the publishing. Um, what do you feel you've contributed that might save them time, money, or enhance their image? That's actually a very good question. I have a very good answer for that. Um, there was a project that I was put on um, for collecting all the serial numbers on the hardware throughout the company for insurance purposes and so forth because we were making a very large multi-million dollar purchase for new equipment. And at that time I had uh, inside information to new products that were radically going to be coming out that would have, let's say, if we were buying 50 let's say $100,000 worth of new computers mm -hmm. at a certain cost, okay? Well, I knew that the next model that would be coming out that would be cost half as much and have twice as many hardware components and whatnot. And I brought that to the attention of my manager and saved the company actually a large considerable amount of money. Good. So that was a very good beneficiary. Great. Okay. Um, let's see. Give me an example of a time in which you had to be relatively quick in coming to a decision. Okay, there was one time I was working for Apple over here on campus and there was a class going on and the network that me and my coworkers had set up had gone down and we only had minutes before the class was going to start to actually get it going because they were giving a multimedia presentation. So we had to utilize most of our knowledge and our skills to bring the network back up to attention um, very quickly. Mm -hmm. And it was done in a timely manner and the class proceeded without any hesitance. Okay. Let's see. Can you tell me about a job experience in which you had to speak up in order to be sure that other people knew what you thought or felt? Sure. When I worked for the publishing company, every Friday we would have a network meeting where everybody would get together and we'd discuss our problems that week and how we addressed them during the week. And I had noticed quite a few problems on some of the machines as far as software went and I had spoken up, explained to everybody in cryological order what was actually happening when the software would go down, 
how people were being affected and I brought that to immediate attention and the next week it was taken care of by the following Friday. Good for you. Okay. Give me an example of a time in which you felt you were able to build motivation in your coworkers or subordinates at work. Okay, there was one time um, when the system actually did go down and we were working late one night, um, probably past midnight on a Friday night because the system had to be up and going by Monday morning. And I sat there, you know, everybody was kind of down because they were away from their loved ones or whatnot. They wanted to go out and have a good time. And um, it was about 2 o'clock on uh, Friday morning, actually, excuse me, Saturday morning. And um, I was up to me to build confidence in everybody to get the job done. Otherwise, the publishing company wouldn't be able to go through with this weekly ordeal. So I had gone out and bought a late night snack for everybody when I came back. Oh, that's <laughs> kind nice. of motivated them to get the job done. <laughs> that's good. Um, give me an example of a specific occasion in which you conformed to a policy which, with, with which you did not agree. Okay. I actually have several examples of that. Well, give me one, one example. <laughs> one example in particular was we were going to move, make a major hardware purchase on a machine called an LM300, which is a lino type, so we could do all our publications in-house have the templates mailed out and actually the one that we were looking at was it's, was very good. there was a very big price involved in this piece of equipment and I had done a little bit of research on the side and I had argued that this was a much better piece of equipment for the price the cost ratio of the hardware that we were actually buying and implementing on the job and they agreed with me in the end. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, can you describe a time on any job whether it's in school or whether it's uh, on the job, what you've held in which you were faced with problems or stresses that sort of tested your coping skills, and, and what did you do about it? Um, in the school especially, um, if you notice on my resume that I actually did do a four-year engineering technical degree with inside of two years, I've been going straight through school, so I've been under tremendous pressure. Um, some of my assignments conflicted with others, and I've just utilized my time to the best of my ability to actually get it done in a timely manner and not in on time. Mm -hmm. okay. um, let's see. Were you also working while you were in school? Too? Correct. I worked two jobs, one for Apple Computer mm -hmm. and on campus as a student systems okay. engineer for Apple and in the advanced graphic lab. Okay, were these co-op positions? No, as these well? were part-time jobs that I went out and got on my own. Did you co-op at all? No, I actually I talked to extensively with the, at the school a person named Walter Perlman, which worked in the co-op office, and he felt that my um, experience at Air Age Publishing would enable me to go on without the co-ops. So I had gotten a letter of recommendation from my boss, which signed and was sent to him, and we both agreed and felt that my experience was above and beyond the call to co-op, so I was able to bypass them and get out a little bit earlier. Okay. Alright, um, let's see now. Hmm. Let's see. Give me an example of an important goal that you set in the past and tell me about your success in reaching it. Okay, one goal that I did in fact have was that when I graduated high school, I knew I wasn't mature enough to go on to college. So I wanted to learn a trade and then further my education with getting a degree, preferably an engineering degree. So one of those goals was, um, as soon as I graduated high school, I went to automotive and diesel college, and I graduated within a year with an auto body automotive degree. Mm -hmm. So, and then after that I worked for about two years, and I further reaching my goal was I started going back to college part time when I thought I was mature enough. And then I decided to go on with my bachelor's. And now that I'm going to be receiving it, I feel that I've really evolved beyond the call of the goal that I originally set. Mm -hmm. So now it's like I have I always have a degree now, and if I ever get bored with it, I can always fall back on a trade, which I know inside and out. So I feel that that was very, very um, obtaining one of the goals that I wanted to. Mm -hmm. Do you get bored easily? No, I don't. Okay. All right, let's see. Give me an example of a time when you were able to successfully communicate with another person even when 
that individual may not have personally liked you. There was a time when I worked on campus with one of my fellow co-workers, which I used to get along with very well, and then uh, we had a downfall in our professional relationship due to um, personal things. And it was uh, a piece of hardware that I wanted to implement into our strategy for getting uh, the network up to date. And um, actually getting the network up to date. And he felt that it wasn't really necessary, so there was a little bit of turmoil and conflict between me and my fellow coworker. But in the end, it all worked out well. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, let's see. Now. Describe what you think is the most creative work related project which you've carried out. Most creative work related project I've ever carried out. Mm -hmm. um, I was set in charge of a team of six people. Um, before I came up here to school at the publishing company to implement, come up with an effective format for a big insurance company that was coming in. And what we had to do was we had to utilize all the serial numbers on all a vast hardware and everything. And I had to take these people and organize them to go out, find the serial numbers, all the, all the software, inventory, basically all the hardware and software packages that we had. And then in the end of our six week expiration, I had to implement it all into a 42-page draft and present it to the publisher and say this is a complete listing of all the hardware and software prices and everything that we've done mm -hmm. in the last six weeks. So that was a very big accomplishment, I feel. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, can you give me an example or a time when you carefully had to analyze another person you know, or a situation in order to be effective in guiding your action or decision? Sure. There was a time before I was promoted to network technician that I was put in charge of a Pitney Bell's mailing manifest system, mm -hmm. which is a giant um, computer, computerized terminal that actually weighs, analyzes, and puts sh uh, shipping numbers and tickets along with price tags on the um, packages to be sent mm -hmm. out. And what I had done was um, we had a new trainee that was coming in and he was uh, he's actually very sharp and I was put in charge of him to train him on this system. So in the mm -hmm. end he utilized it very well. Good. Good job. Good. Describe a time in which you felt it was necessary to modify or change your actions in order to respond to the needs of another person. Okay, there was one time when I was working before I was promoted to the publishing company. I was working in the mailroom, and the manager that was there was extremely difficult to get along with on a professional level. And one of the new employees that was there uh, was being verbally abused, literally, um, by the manager. And I took it upon myself to put her in her place because I didn't feel that at that time that was. It was like it was like the vulture coming to the little chicken, the, the little prey. There was no need on a professional level for any of that. I didn't lose my temper or anything, but I just gave her basically a piece of my mind. Mm -hmm. okay. All right. Hmm. Do you have any questions for me, Peter? Um, based on what you just asked me and what we talked about earlier, um, no, actually, I don't. Okay. I feel that all my uh, questions okay. are taken care of already. Well, we probably could start you off in the network access division. It, uh, we have actually two openings. Really, the other one is more related to the fiber optics. Correct. Um, but uh, we can see what we have there. I do need to fill this position, however. Um, let's see. What are your salary requirements? I'd like to be started off between forty and fifty thousand mm -hmm. dollars at the present position. I noted on the information that I was given that there were no salary requirements on there, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so I was kind of in the dark. Okay. What motivates you, and how do you best motivate others? Do you think? I'm motivated by ideas, people coming to me and saying. Um, I have this problem, can you give me an idea? And it really makes me feel good, it motivates me, and inspires me to help a person out. And when someone has a problem, likewise, I like to give them ideas to motivate them, to help them with their problems and whatnot, and so forth down the line. Mm -hmm. 
mm -hmm. pertaining to whatever, whether it's technical engineering or something with very little with a piece of software or something along those lines. Mm -hmm. Um, well, sounds very good. Let's, let's see now. What do you think are some of your shortcomings that you exhibit in your last position? In terms of, can you elaborate on that question just a little bit? What were some of the shortcomings that you exhibited in your last position? In other words, what are some of your weaknesses you feel you have? Okay, I don't feel I have any weaknesses. I feel that I have areas that I can improve on, though, whether they're intercommunication skills between employees. I, I do have room for improvement. I feel that everybody does. Or whether it's just my, you know, my ever-increasing knowledge of the computer field to work related to being committed to going out and saying, okay, this is what I have to learn and researching it and whatnot. But as far as weaknesses go, like I said, I don't believe I have any. I just have areas where I can increase on. Mm -hmm. Okay, very good. All right, well, we are interviewing a few people, and we'll have to get back to you. Um, what we could do is pass you along to the systems administrator and see the next step. Thank you very much. Thank you.